computer. Okay. I'm here with Angela Ardolino, founder of CBD Dog Health, which sells a full range of CBD products for dogs and cats, including formulations for skin ailments, stress and anxiety, pain from cancer, and lots more. Angela started the company after experiencing the benefits of CBD for herself, then wanted her pets to have the same, but she couldn't find the same quality sources, so she went out and made some her on her herself. Let me, <laughs> that was way too, I'll, I'll redo that. <laughs> no problem. And it'll go in the outtakes. So, <laughs> so you didn't find the same quality sources, so she, what's the right, so she. Um, I created my own. Created her own, perfect. I basically couldn't find a pet, a product for pets. Um, you Got know, it. took me so long to find a good one for humans that didn't have, you know, extra terrible things in it. Okay. So then finding a human brand that I could trust, and then I started talking to them about developing yeah. my tinctures. Okay. So, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll, I'll redo the intro. Okay. I'm gonna. Tell Tim, who uh, is, is listening here, Tim, cut all that and let's go with this, unless I blow it again. Okay. I'm here with Angela Ardolino, founder of CBD Dog Health, which sells a full range of CBD products for dogs and cats, including formulations for skin ailments, stress and anxiety, pain from cancer, and more. Angela started the company after experiencing the benefits of CBD for herself, then wanted her pets to have the same, but she couldn't find the same quality sources out there, so she created her own. You can learn all about Angela, her team, and her products at cbddoghealth.com. And I'm excited to get into all this today with Angela. So Angela, welcome. Hello, thanks for having me. All right, I'm excited. And why don't you take a second to fill in anything I may have missed there and we'll get right into your story. Yeah, I was, I think it was about 2015, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. Um, which is an autoimmune disease, uh, which I probably caused, I got, gave myself from being stressed, filled with stress and anxiety all the time. Being an entrepreneur, I know you know how that is. Um, and the only prescription, only medication at all that I was being prescribed was Humira, hmm. which uh, we know link is, has so many links to lymphoma and all kinds of other terrible diseases, and I wasn't interested in that. So I started looking for more natural, holistic remedies, which I've always done that with anything. Any problem comes up, I always go for the holistic remedy first with myself, my family, and all of my animals. Um, so that's how I found uh, full spectrum cannabis medicine. Um, I took me a while to find because of course, once you find the medicine, then you have to find one that's pure and hasn't been adulterated and has been manufactured correctly and doesn't have uh, additives that cause harm. So I, I finally found a good medicine, took it, and not only did it get rid of my um, pain and stiffness, but mm. my stress and anxiety went down tremendously. So I was like, what the heck? This is a miracle. So I sold my business, um, threw myself into the medical cannabis industry, and I'll never forget going to my first event, like in 2015 in San Diego, mm. where, now I had already, I had a magazine, so I was already here in Florida pushing for Amendment 2. I, I worked really hard with getting that passed here, medical marijuana. So I had already been writing stories in my magazine about families um, who their children's seizures were stopping, their cancer was going away, tumors were shrinking, they were being able to live normal lives. So all of those types of things um, I already knew about, but at this conference, I got to see it. Mm. I watched children in full, having full seizures and their mom calmly open up a tincture, shake it, lift the lip, put it on the gums, and the kid go from a total seizure to totally normal and having a conversation with you. Wow. And I, I, I remember what came to my mind was this is inhumane to keep this away from people, mm. children especially. And so, when you, you mentioned the seizure, was that, those were epileptic seizures? Um, it was called, it's a worse than uh, epilepsy, it's called the Dravet syndrome. Um, mm. They're very severe, um, you know, in the past kids would just die from them. So basically 
there, uh, you'll, you'll find a big group of those mothers who are really working hard because it, it keeps their kids alive and stops their seizures mm -hmm. immediately. So um, it's, we know it works for epilepsy. Um, but when I saw this happen and what it did for me, I sold my business, threw myself into the industry and I attended a program. Um, I was in the inaugural class at the University of Vermont. Hmm. The School of Medicine offers a program in medical cannabis therapeutic uses and biology. Wow. So I took that, and that's when I found out animals had the same system as we did and could benefit from the medicine even more. And I happen to already love animals and be in that business and have a rescue farm. And I've been working and rescuing animals my entire life. Um, so it just was the two perfect things. I said, cannabis and dogs coming together. I'm in heaven. I love what I do. So um, because I couldn't find a product back in 2016 for pets, um, I found a lot of human products that people would then realize, ooh, I could make some money making a pet product, and they would take the human product and just put a paw print on it. But those products would have sweeteners in it like xylitol or stevia. And we know xylitol kills and stevia makes them sick. Um, you know, other weird flavorings because humans care about what it tastes like. Dogs do not. Um, along with finding how I was going to be a cultivator because it took me so long to even find someone growing a medicinal product. Wow. So it, I've, I've done all, I've done everything. I've been from finding the seed to growing it myself. I know every aspect. I know everything about the biology. And now I know how well it works in, in animals. Um, so I basically developed what I thought would be the perfect tinctures and salves for pets to use. So I have a little bit of knowledge in other essential oils that, as you know, have the same components that the cannabis plant has, um, and, and figured out which ones I could take those compounds that would help the cannabis work better. So I partnered with a um, essential oils expert who's been manufacturing all natural products, both in the pet side and human side for over 30 years. And that's when we really formulated each of my different tinctures due to ailments. Hmm. And I was able to do that because I own a grooming and pet store. So I got to see every dog that walked in and what they were suffering from. So I was able to kind of make tinctures for those symptoms. And that's where we are now. <laughs> wow. So if I can rewind uh, just a little bit, what was the path of, with your diagnosis of the rheumatoid arthritis from being on Humira Pharmaceutical? Oh, I never went on Humira. Oh, you didn't go on it? Heck no. So okay. what was the path from the diagnosis to starting the use of CBD? Um, well, you know, I couldn't get it in Florida, so the first time I tried it was in California. Um, and, of course, tried it, and you literally can feel a difference in 20 minutes. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, I came home with a suitcase full of it, <laughs> along wow. with uh, everybody else I knew that was suffering from something. So that's, that's where I discovered it, and that's when I started learning how to pick a better you know, why does this one work better than this one? And how is it? So that's when I learned everything about the manufacturing process, the growing process. I mean, things back in 2015 were so, California is a, as you know, you said you lived in California, is another planet as far as cannabis is concerned. You know, 2015, um, it was medically legal, um, but had just become or was about to become recreationally legal and to get a recreational pro uh, product in a dispenser, dispensary, it had to be tested at a third-party lab. The medical product didn't, which made no sense whatsoever. <laughs> so, you know, people who were sick were getting a product that probably had pesticides and God knows what. So, you know, everything from there not being enough medicine, so the cartel is still, you know, funding and, and giving uh, giving the product to dispensaries because they're running out or, you know, they don't have a pure product. It's crazy. It's crazy. So, you know, no, going through the whole human side of this industry and now being in the pet side of it, everything that happened in the human side is now being 
repeated in the pet part you yeah. know where they're making the claims of thc and all that and you're like i'm like we've already been through this already <laughs> you know why are we reinventing the wheel it all exists all the studies are out there and what's great about now is now there's actually studies clinical trials with pets testing it uh, mm. whether it's safe whether it works and it does right and um so it, it completely legitimizes what i'm doing because I wouldn't make a broad spectrum product or an isolate product or a product that can contained industrialized hemp from overseas. So anybody who launched a product before the farm bill was either not leaving the legal state they were in, or they were using a product that was a broad spectrum an mm. isolate or from overseas. So I didn't, I wasn't going to do that. I waited till the farm bill became legal. Uh, you know, was passed. Actually, when we knew it was going to be passed, we launched. Um, and so for the studies of, because you worry. I've been, I've, I was just at SuperZoo where there is a, a man, the president of the NASC, giving out the wrong information. Hmm. And he's an authority. So everybody's going to take his word for it. So they leave his saying, come over and call me a liar or, or somebody else a liar. And we're like, yeah, no, we're not. Or we have prominent vets like Dr. Robert Silver, who's come out and said THC is not needed. You know, first he said it was dangerous and toxic. And now he's saying it's not really needed. But then he'll say it's needed. I just came from the, um, the National Holistic uh, Vets Association conference where I sat in a three-hour lecture where Dr. Rick Gary Richter said yep this is what it does it's safe it works it has to be full spectrum it's the best hmm. um, so that was amazing also so it's just a matter of all that information getting out quicker you know so that people know about it and know the truth because everything out there you type it into to a right. Google search and it's going to say THC is going to kill your dog or is toxic to your dog. And that is not true, especially at 0.3%. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I want to get into all that, that technical stuff to really help, uh, you know, listeners decide, you know, wh what is the best path to take when choosing between so many options and what are the frauds out there? Because, you know, we know it's out there to, to take a step back a bit, just what's your understanding of, you know, physiologically how, um, CBD or cannabinoids in general work in, you know, our system and of course in a dog system, you know, related to the endocannabinoid system or whatever else, just to kind of give listeners a sense of, to kind of picture what might be going on in their dog's body when they administer CBD and how that could be impacting any number of um, issues they might be dealing with. Great question. So we both have what's called the endocannabinoid system, and it's a system that exists in our body. And this system controls everything from mood, appetite, uh, anxiety, um, to it also reduces inflammation throughout the entire body and the organs, it, anywhere. Everywhere there could be inflammation, it gets rid of inflammation. It's responsible for keeping our body at homeostasis. So if we're not at homeostasis, we have a deficiency in our endocannabinoid system. So the, in our endocannabinoid system, we have CB1 and CB2 receptors. CB1 receptors are found in our brain, in our brain stem, and CB2 receptors are throughout our body, our spinal cord organs, and dogs have the same, and they have more receptors than we do. So they really respond to the medicine. And I could tell you why they have more receptors, but that's a whole nother podcast, but they do. Meaning that 0.3% THC makes a big impact on them compared to none or us, it, you know, human, it may not really affect. Um, so this endocannabinoid system, we have something called endocannabinoids that are floating around in our body and they get to our receptors and if we have a deficiency of those cannabinoids there happens to be this wonderful plant called the cannabis plant that makes phytocannabinoids that take the place of the endocannabinoids that are um, deficient in our body so when we take the cannabis plant we get the terpenes the compounds and its cannabinoids into our system and it starts repairing our deficiencies and brings us back to homeostasis so 
when we say it cures cancer, uh, I don't say it cures cancer. I say that it heals because it's helping the sick person or animal come back to homeostasis. And when we're back in homeostasis, if we start doing everything else right, like get toxins out of our life, eat correctly, do all those things, we are able to heal ourselves. But we can't do that until our body's back to homeostasis. Mm -hmm. So, of course, when we get older, we're going to get more deficiencies in our endocannabinoid system. Of course, pets are going to have more deficiency as they get older. So usually older pets may need a little bit more. Every dog is different. Every human is different. So to be able to say, oh, my dog's 50 pounds and it needs this much is ridiculous mm -hmm. um, because every dog and every ailment is different. So I think I answered your question. <laughs> Yeah, that's very, very helpful. I mean, the, the way that I understand it is we have this system of endo, endo being internal cannabinoid receptors, which, like you said, the body uses to maintain homeostasis and a, a sense of overall balance in the body. And so, you know, people may say, well, CBD cures cancer or it cures this disease or whatever. It's not that it's directly curing that disease as in going in and just knocking it out directly like, you know, like a... a like a boxing glove would knock something over, but it's more of helping to create the overall environment such that the body is in a state where it can more effectively heal itself and or defend itself against internal or external invaders, et cetera. And because it works across these inflammatory pathways, inflammation is almost at the root of, of just about Every everything, reason. including yeah. cancer, right? So the, you know, the body has its natural inflammation response system and if that can be what i hear you saying is that that can be you know more regulated or or put into more of a state of balance then it can end up impacting lots of different health issues right and so we said that it's so funny to not be able to say that it cures cancer because cure is such a strong word um but i'm going to say from my experience and I've been using the medicine since 2015 and on hundreds of dogs. If you go to our website, I have a lot of the stories up there. And I have cured dogs of cancer. Now I've cured dogs of cancer by not only getting them back to homeostasis and then feeding them the right diet and all that and exercise and all of that, but I, THC uh, suffocates cancer cells. Hmm. So I have salves. Um, because I've known this from, from going to school. So I have salves that I can have, and I've done this over and over and over again, um, put it on a tumor on a dog. And I can, it looks like someone took a lighter to it and burned it. You hmm. can physically watch it turn black and burn and die and fall off. Wow. So you can't deny that. Um, I have a reputation here in, in the Florida area where uh, I have relationships with vets where, you know, they've tried everything and it's usually cancer or a senior dog that can no longer walk. Um, and the, the client's not willing to give up. So they hand them over to me. So I have nothing to lose. And we have gotten rid of, uh, I'm talking, these are dogs are supposed to be put down or the vet says nothing else. So filled with cancer, covered in tumors, got rid of them all dogs still alive uh my latest success was a 17 year old chihuahua who the owner said could not walk anymore hmm. was on every prescription drug no hair i have a video story of her which is great no hair grandma seizures every four hours running around like a puppy again is this daisy on the on, daisy. okay yeah, that was a great video wow awesome um and you know it's terrible because of course I'm doing all this and doing a really bad job at, at recording all of it and taking pictures of it. But the great thing is that now we have so many people using the product that they're taking pictures and we're mm -hmm. able to put their stories up. And I'm amazed still. I'm constantly amazed by this medicine because you go to treat one thing and it helps something else. Um, my Doberman Nina, she had an eye injury from uh, one of my roosters. The vet saved the eye, stitched it up, and a tumor grew on her eye, and she's petrified of thunder and lightning. So here in Florida, you know, every, in the summer at 4 o'clock, every afternoon, it starts thundering and lightning, and she loves it. She'll come sit next to me. She knows this is the stuff that makes her feel better, 
and ask for it. I give it to her. I was giving it to her every day for however many months during the summer and the fatty lipid on her eye tumor went away. Completely went away. Wow. It's never come back because now, you know, I give it to her every day or every week now. So it's constantly amazing me. You know, somebody will start using, you know, another story is uh, uh, someone will start using it for a tumor that her dog had for like 13 years. In two weeks, it shrank and fell off. And she wow. took a picture every day. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, so it kills cancer cells. It suffocates them. Um, and kills them and I've watched it happen before my eyes and it's an amazing thing. I studied it, saw pictures, understood how it was happening, but to watch it, you know, I had a, you know, black lab with a grapefruit size tumor here and an orange here. This one got all in four months, shrank all the way down and popped and within 48 hours hair was growing on it. Hmm. So, I mean, you just can't deny that, you know, she, wow. she, we brought her back to homeostasis, started treating the problems, put her on a new diet and exercise, happy, no stress, and they can heal themselves. Yeah, they're supposed to live to be 20 years old. Right. Now, now you talk about uh, you know, the difference between THC and CBD and other cannabinoids. So I'm, I'm getting a little confused because you, you mentioned, so to what extent do your products have THC or do they not and or let's just dive into this whole thing. And so for anyone, you know, listening, I think mo most people are probably aware THC is the psychoactive cannabinoid tetrahydrocannabinol, which, you know, creates the, you know, famous like marijuana high, et cetera. Um, and then you have a, a whole range of other cannabinoids um, in the, in the plant CBD being the one that is usually the most abundant and the most well-known and the most researched but there are tons of others, including ones that haven't even been discovered. Um, so, so can you just talk a bit about THC, CBD, whether your products have it or not, and let's wade into the whole uh, controversy of THC and, and dogs as well. All right, let me put my THC super cape on. Right. I actually have a THC molecule necklace on because it's so misunderstood. <laughs> I always say it's like the pit bull in the dog breed world. <laughs> but um, THC is, you know, the most important. And if you're a human and you're sick and you've got cancer, you're going to need more THC. Dogs, however, like I said, have, you know, I've been, it's been said twice as many to 10 times more receptors than we do. So they don't need all that THC. They just need a little bit. Um, so this is the most important thing, I think, when you're choosing a product is that it should be full spectrum. And what full spectrum means is that it has, it, it's not, hasn't been, it's been um, extracted and it hasn't been adulterated as much as others have. You, um, it's CO2 supercritical extracted from the flower and you do it from the flower because that's where most of the compounds are. In that flower, there are thousands of compounds. So far, there's been 114 can cannabinoids um, discovered, some that even exist in other plants like echinacea um, or some of our other healing plants that we're familiar with that we're already using. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of the same properties. Then they have terpenes in them, which are things you also find in other fruits, um, vegetables, plants, flowers. Uh, for instance, we have a tincture where we add other terpenes from other plants because it's been proven to help the absorption and to help uh, the cannabis medicine work better. Um, one of my favorite stories to prove that is like, for instance, if you do smoke or, uh, or take marijuana and you're not having a good experience, you can suck on a lemon because the terpene limonene is also in the lemon and in marijuana, and it is known to balance out hmm. the effects of THC. Interesting. So that happens in a million different ways in the medicine. So having a full spectrum product means you're getting all of those in there. Not all of them, but most of them. That's and they, the haven't been, they haven't been destroyed. So the difference between um, THC and CBD is now, we have to remember marijuana is a made-up name for the cannabis plant, and so is hemp. It is the cannabis plant, and then there is marijuana and hemp. Marijuana was named 
back in the day to make it sound like it was an evil plant that the Mexicans were bringing over and stealing our women. Not kidding. So it's actually a racist term that still exists and I hate it. So let's change it, but anyway, or change the, the meaning of it. And then there's hemp, which has just been defined by the US government as containing 0.3 or less THC. So in that point three, middle- point, point, point 0.3%, right? THC, okay. right, which became legal for the farm bill. So anywhere in between is, is it, you could have any type of plant. So uh, you, there, there used to be strains, whether they'd be indica or uh, sativa, doesn't exist anymore. It's basically just this plane. And if, it, if the plant has more THC, it's marijuana. And if it has more THC, it has less CBD. If it has more CBD, it has less THC. So those are the two main compounds that you need to have in there for it to work the best. And then full spectrum means CBG, CBN, CBGA, all the others that are very active should show up. There should be terpenes in there. There should be flavonoids, which are responsible for how it, how it smells and tastes, but it also helps the medicine work best. Um, this was a great story that I just learned from Dr. Richter, which was that, you know, why you don't want broad spectrum. Broad spectrum means they have taken or they've attempted to take the THC out. There's still THC in there. It's just not detect detectable on a drug test or a lab certificate. So the people who were making a broad spectrum product released it before the farm bill so they wouldn't have to be in trouble and could hurry up and get everyone to know about the medicine. Will it work? Most likely. If you're dealing with an anxious or a dog that needs to be calm, absolutely a broad spectrum product is gonna work. But it's not going to stop a seizure. It's not going to get rid of a uh, major pain, it's not gonna fight cancer because you need to have that little bit of THC in it. When you take it out, for instance, THC isolate is known as spice. You heard spice? Mm -mm. Um, you can go into a smoke shop and buy it. And it is a isolate of THC and it's mm. what makes people go crazy. And what happens is that it, it binds to a CD1 receptor in the brain and it doesn't let go. Mm. So when people are making an, an isolate of CBD, there's an effect and people feel different. But again, it's just an isolate. It's not doing all the things that it could do. And now it's coming from China and oh, being God. incorporated because it's a powder and it's cheap. So broad spectrum products and isolate products are going to be a lot cheaper. Um, what you, what you, you get what you pay for. So if you're seeing a one ounce bottle for $19.99, $24.99, you're probably getting um, a low quality product or a product that doesn't have very much mm -hmm. of the medicine in it that it needs to work. Um, but yeah, I think full spectrum is the most important thing for people to understand. Um, you'll hear people say things like, it's full spectrum without THC. <laughs> That's called broad spectrum. So that's now people trying to change their tune because they have a broad spectrum product and all of the clinical research that's coming out clearly states that it has to be a full spectrum product. And you may have heard the term, the entourage effect. Mm -hmm. So the entourage effect is when you have a full spectrum product, everything is working together to make the medicine work best it can. Then in our tinctures, and, and other people do this, we add even more things to help it be absorbed more quickly. We manufacture it a certain way. We emulsify it so that it gets smaller and gets into the bloodstream faster. So there are different ways to make your medicine better than others. Um, so there, it's been proven that hemp seed oil, which has none of the cannabinoids in it, but is extremely beneficial, great omega-3, 6, and fatty acids, that also helps with absorption, and MCT oil from coconuts also helps. So basically when you're looking at a medicine, it should have a cannabis medicine. It should have four to five ingredients and that's it. You know, no flavor. Dogs don't need baking flavor. They don't need cheese flavor. And God knows where they're getting that, but we don't need that, especially yeah. if your dog is sick. Now on the full spectrum point, that seems, has anyone, is the, is the term full spectrum, full spectrum, regulated in terms of what that actually means. 
nothing's regulated. Um, and, so, and so on, on that point, so to what extent do products actually list and actually claim similar to supplements on the human side, how much of each cannabinoid is in the product as a percent, for example, do products ever Great claim question. that? Yes, absolutely. So you'll, that's one of the problems is that, you know, they can say anything they want on a label. Um, those of us that come from the cannabis industry who are in the pet industry, which there's not too many, but the few of us understand what's coming down the line, what the FDA is going to expect, what the label should look like. And the only way that we can regulate ourselves as companies is to get a certificate of authenticity. Did I say that right? Yes, a COA. <laughs> And it uh, should come from a third-party lab. And oh, certificate of, a, certificate of analysis. Analysis. Yes. I knew it wasn't authenticity. I was like, something else right. of analysis. Thank you. Um, that proves what's in your medicine. Um, now, again, there's even savvy people who put their COA up, and it'll, go, it'll say 99% CBD. So I'm not that good at math. But if it's 99% CBD, how is it a liquid and um, what's the 1% of the other stuff? That's an isolate. So that's someone who understands that, that the customer has realized CBD is the most important thing, THC is bad, and then they're going to go buy this product that's 99% th I mean CBD. So you don't want that. You want a good ratio. You want more CBD than the other um, cannabinoids, which will always happen because the two main ones are THC and CBD, but you want all of them to work together. What, I've told this story so many times. One of my favorite um, terpenes is myrcene, and myrcene is very uh, prominent in mangoes. Hmm. So uh, myrcene does all kinds of great things, and I'm trying to, to – myrcene is another fruit you could eat to help bring your, bring you back down to a balance if you do have a bad reaction with something that you maybe tried or got from a dispensary and it's too strong or whatever. But myrcene, actually, if we just picture the CB1 receptor and Mr. CBD coming to, to attach itself to that receptor and it's just moving along, without myrcene, it will take a really long time to get there. Hmm. It may never get there because let's say I swallowed it instead. And if, if I swallow the medicine, 80% of it goes out of my body. If I'm lucky, some, some tinctures, 95% goes out of your body. Hmm. So it may never make it there. But if I'm a full spectrum product and that terpene myrcene's in there, it's like lube. It's like a super highway. It makes the CBD go shoot to the, to the receptor. So just understanding that all these compounds are helping the medicine work is why it's so important to be a full spectrum product. So um, you're, we're gonna probably see more people say that it's a full spectrum product without THC because they're gonna start changing what they're saying, but that makes it not a full spectrum product. And to, to what extent, I don't remember hearing this at, at some point, was that in order for the endocannabinoid system to actually even be available to receive cannabinoids, CBD, all, all non-THC cannabinoids. There needs to be some level of THC that kind of primes the system or activates it or wakes it up. Do I have that right? Even, on a, even for a human? It has to be, yes. If you want the full effect of the medicine to work correctly, meaning everything from I want to get rid of, rid of my anxiety to I have cancer or I have a tumor or I have, you know, an IBS, whatever it is, you absolutely have to have a little bit of that THC in it because they work together. When you take it out, you're taking a part of the medicine away. Um, it's kind of like how I, I just did a video with Rodney Habib from Planet Paws. Did, I don't know if you got to see it. No, not yet. Someone out there with the dogs. <laughs> um, because we, we were trying to figure out how to, to make this point come across. So we used the... Um, analogy of kombucha. So kombucha has 0.5 to 2% alcohol in it. Right. Beer has four or five, wine, you know, eight, all the way up to hard liquor. 
But when we drink the kombucha, we don't get drunk. Do you get drunk when you drink kombucha? No. No. Just like we don't get high off of a full, full spectrum hemp product because there's just a little bit of the THC that's needed to make the medicine work. Just like the kombucha through fermentation has a little bit of alcohol that's needed to make it work. But that doesn't make us drunk and that's not gonna make my dog high or you high, but it's one of the most important compounds to get rid of cancer, get rid of pain, get rid of, you can't do those things without THC. And I just came from the Holistic Vet Conference where not only do they say that, but they also recommend higher doses of THC to get rid of pain or a, more, or a sicker dog. Because mm -hmm. you gotta remember in California, they've been doing this for years. In California, you can buy a one-to-one -one THC to CBD product for pets. Well, so people yeah. who are everywhere else in this country freaking out about 0.3% THC, I'm like, oh my gosh, in California, you know, they're giving it a lot. It's not going to kill dogs. It, I don't know if you know this, but in 1970, they did a uh, research study trying to figure out how much THC it would take to kill a person. Hmm. So they did a, uh, the study on rats, beagles, and chimpanzees. And not only did um, nobody die, I, actually I think two rats died, um, and I can't remember what, I think they got ammonia, something like that, and died from that, probably because they were giving them so much, who knows how they were giving it to them. But the beagles, not a, not, none of the beagles died, and none of the chimpanzees died. And not only did they, the chimpanzees not die, their livers figured out how to metabolize it and brought themselves back to normal. Hmm, interesting. So nobody in the history, and that was trying to prove how much it would take to kill a human that they were testing on animals. So that's from the 1970s. So people that are scared of 0.3%, it, it right. drives me crazy because that means someone has given them the wrong information. And there's very prominent, important people who are giving that information out. Right. Well, I think it's also important to note that it's not the percentage that matters. It's, it's actually the actual final milligram dose. And again, like you said, that is actually going to have the impact. So, I mean, if you have, if someone takes one milligram of, let's say a, a, a combined full spectrum product and it's 0.3%, you know, that of uh, THC, that's such a small dose of THC. It's going to do absolutely, absolutely nothing. And so, you know, you could have a product that is 10 or 20% THC, let's say, but if the dose is relatively small, then maybe that's all that's, that's, that that's potentially needed to have that effect. Right. I mean, there, the, the side effects are um, so minimal. There are small side effects um, where the dog will kind of get dizzy or whatever. And I've had that happen by our um, highest, our 1100 milligram, 37 milligrams per dose, uh, two doses of that. And she got a pug, little pug got woozy. It's the first time I'd ever seen it. And the owner, um, took a picture of it. I've seen it in my dogs when I've given them a one-to-one, -one, but never with a full spectrum hemp um, extract. Mm -hmm. So that right there proves how much more sensitive they are to the medicine. Um, this dog's an older dog, so its deficiencies may have been, um, you know, a lot more than a younger dog, but you know, the dog went from not moving because it had an injury to running and barking and playing to kind of getting woozy, which freaked the parent out. Um, but that's the only side effect compared to these prescription drugs that completely suppress dogs' immune systems. The dogs die from it, die from something else because they have no immune system their reactions, then they go in and my dog's hair's falling out, he's scratching, and then they give them another prescription drug. And it, it's terrible, it's awful. And then we're losing our dogs at seven and eight, nine years old from over vaccinating, over prescription, and then bad diet. So I, you know, there's, I know you know, I'm sure you know about the raw food movement. I'm kind of on the natural, getting people away from these terrible prescription drugs. Most of them made, for humans, given to dogs, not for their weight, not just because it gets rid of the problem. We have to remember that veterinarians and doctors were not taught about the endocannabinoid system, and most are not taught about nutrition, so they don't know anything about either one of those things. Um, and it's up to us to to take charge of not only our our health but our pet's health, and question it, question everything, do your own research. Um, it's going to be hard to find a good product 
um, but they're out there and there are people doing it right. I'm actually trying to work on a list of the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I had to make an ugly category because even people who were doing it right two years ago jumped on, you know, saw everyone around them getting rich with the, the no THC isolate or broad spectrum product that they're starting to put out those products. Um, because this is what you were told. If you wanted to sell your full spectrum product in an illegal state, it couldn't have THC in it. So people, some people even have a full spectrum line and a broad spectrum line, mm -hmm. but I refused and other people, there's certain companies that refuse to put out a broad or an isolate because we know better. Interesting. So um, I want to get into how, what can be helpful to listeners in terms of, of, of what to look out for or, or what, so let, let's start with if, if someone is searching for a product, kind of all the great boxes to check, and then we'll get into what the red flags are for these products to watch out for. So what I heard you saying is, is number one, uh, look for a product that claims full spectrum on the label, even though that's not regulated. Um, and second would be it being CO2 extraction from the flower, right, was another um, potential point and then potentially lastly if there is actually a claim on on the label of what the actual breakdown of these cannabinoids is like it's 0.25 percent THC whatever it happens to be right so the know. labels the labels there's like even my labels I can't put that all that information okay. I have on our labels um, how much CBD is in it how much okay so it's not CBD it's called full spectrum hemp extract so it's how much of all of that is in it, including CBD. So we list out CBD and then hemp seed oils and then the THC. But you have to go to the COA to verify what's on the label is true. So what the hemp industry is doing is, and to prepare for whatever the FDA may or may not say, because remember the hemp industry is going to the FDA and going, here's the proof. This is how we think it should be regulated. This is da, 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 da. So we're following all those guidelines in hopes that that's what's going to happen. And Mitch McConnell's behind it. So there's a chairs in hell. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, our labels have a QR code that takes you directly to that batch's um, certificate of analysis. So if whatever I say on there doesn't really matter. This certificate mm -hmm. is going to tell me. So I just need to find a batch number. It should be underneath. It should be on the label. It should be in an insert. And you should know what yeah. batch number it is by clicking on it and going directly to a COA, which will tell you. And when you look at the COA, you'll see all of the cannabinoids listed out. Not all of them, not 114 of them, but the main ones listed out. And you'll see a little bit of a percentage or a little line showing mm -hmm. that they're all there. When that's all there, that means it's also going to have the terpenes and flavonoids in place also. The other thing that certificate tells you is that there are no metals, no herbicides, no pesticides, nothing toxic is in it. So it's, it's a double duty. So if someone has taken the time to put on their label that it's organic, they don't need to because A, if it's grown under the farm bill, it's grown organically anyway. And two, it's on the certificate will show that it has none of those things on there. So can I show my, should I, can I uh, share my screen for those people Absolutely. watching on YouTube and we'll go to your, one of your products. I, I, I brought it up here. So, sure. um, cause I give a very comprehensive product page here, including the C of A, which you were walking through. So, um, can you see my screen now? Yeah. So this is a great example. If you are, let's say you're interested in this product, if you scroll down, you'll see there's some pictures there and you'll see mm -hmm. the third one is the COA. You should easily be able to link it to the product. We also have it down on the bottom um, thing and up on, I think about us shows all of our lab certificates. This is what you want from a company. This is how we are self-regulating ourselves. So, um, for instance, when I was creating this list, uh, I was trying to create it for Rodney. I went on and a lot of places, uh, they'll say, they'll talk about their COA, but I couldn't find them anywhere on their site. So I turned and emailed them asking for their most recent. And of course I didn't get a response, but um, you know, we have to keep in mind that even the people that are 
understanding that the COA and full spectrum need to be in there may still try to fool us. So make sure that it is, you know, has the name, has the date, mm -hmm. you know, this, the, actually our labels will, the QR code, it's not up there. I should put it up there. Our QR, our label, Joe, do you have a, can you bring me the flyer with the QR codes? Um, it'll have it where they, well, not only when they scan it, it'll take them to the lab certificates website. I mean, the right. lab website where they'll house it. And yeah. these are things that are going to happen on a regular basis. So this is kind of a picture of our labels and you'll see the QR okay, yeah. code Got on it. most of them. Yeah, so, good. Good for you on this. I mean, I've, I've seen very few companies go to this extent in terms of actually having this, the C of A of their, their product on their website, including, you know, the lab where they actually do the, the, the testing because the, the labs are offering now are, oh. they're getting more, cause now it's being more competitive when we had the choice of 10. Now we have, you know, hundreds. yeah. I mean, so don't even let, don't even let me get into the, the lab side of things because I, I, I worked at a, a lab and reference standards company in my early days in the industry wow. and man we did an expose actually it was on dateline about what's called dry labbing where a company will just send in a product and say this is what i'm i'm claiming and they get back uh, you know a, a, an email with the certificate of analysis mm -hmm. and the the product has actually never even been tested it's a dry lab which means there's no actual lab and so, uh, yeah, we did, we had, there was an exposit with Chris Hansen of Dateline NBC awesome. actually. I'll look so, it up. I want to um, share that because yeah, it's so ago. true. It's so true. Like, you know, even go to Hemp RX, he actually has, like he copied and pasted results on the page. There's no COA. I called them. I, I've asked for a COA, but um, yeah, it doesn't. There's, there's people who are doing the, the test themselves in their own place. That doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> you can't test your own thing. You know, you got a little, bit of, a, a little bit of a conflict of interest there. So right. let me, let me, um, I think this would be really helpful for people listening. Cause we'll just run, we'll just take a look at your label because it's possible to compare your label to, you know, some other product and we can kind of run through the, the boxes to check of what you should look for. So, um, let me, let right. me interrupt you for a second to explain sure. to you how many times these labels have changed. Okay. Because, um, the, remember, it's not, it wasn't my idea to put these QR codes. This is the hemp ind industry trying to help the FDA uh. with regulations. I, of course, I'm going to follow them. I think it's great. So some things you'll already see in preparation is there's going to be the, uh, we got rid of the dosing that's on there. Um, and it has a little box with the FDA disclaimer in it now. <laughs> so and the FDA disclaimer is it's basically going to go where the, uh, Oh, it's I not on this one. Through. Go down a little bit more. Yeah. Right there. It says under 25 pounds, all that. It's okay. going to go there. And then the QR code goes on there and the, um, line that says this product contains 0.3% uh, THC or less. Okay. So those will be new things added. Right. So in addition to, and everyone's going to have to comply with that. So in terms of no, not true, you know, the F I will be shocked if the FDA ever gets around to pet products. Hmm. They don't, they don't regulate anything now. They don't regulate vape pens that people are sucking on and getting lung cancer. So why people hold such importance on what the FDA is going to do or say, FDA hasn't been on our side in a long time. FDA has approved opioids that kill people by the thousands every single day. So, you know, I'm going to do what the FDA tells us to do because we have to, but they're never going to get around to a pet product. So we are self-regulating. I'm going to put everything I think the FDA wants because there are places like in Texas, um, and it's not the whole state. I can't even remember what what city it was where they have put someone they called him the director of chemistry or something like that and he wa he is walking into pet stores and pulling products off the shelves because he is looking for those things that don't say all of those things boxing them up not letting them touch it for 30 days then coming back in 30 days and making them destroy it in front of him and you're like what 
And then, you know, I'm in Florida. I'm like, I dare someone to walk into my shop and touch my stuff. <laughs> I'll be on the news. You know, it's like, but you know, if you don't know better and they're like, I was threatened the other day. You can't say that. It's not legal for you to say that. And I'm like, who's going to arrest me? The FDA does not have the power to arrest anybody or do anything. I mean, does everybody understand how many things are out there that we consume and do that are not approved by the FDA? But it's CBD and um, we're going to dot all our I's and cross our T's and, you know, do what we think. We're going to follow what the hemp industry says to do to make us be legit and follow our own regulations. So that's mm -hmm. why we're doing that. Um, we're taking well, off. We're taking off the, um, you know, the, the dropper because it, de it depends on the dog and the ailment. And finally, that information is getting out um, because everybody's so scared that they're going to overdose or give their dog too much. <laughs> or I get more concerned that they're not going to give their dog enough to treat whatever it is. So let, let, what are, let's maybe as a, something actionable for, um, and I'll stop the, sh the sharing here. Um, is something actionable for um, listeners would be what are the top three conditions that CBD tends to be helpful with? And let's just pretend for the, the sake of, um, you know, generalizing that we're talking about a 50 pound, um, let's say German shepherd, golden retriever. Um, what, what would, how, how would you go about at first kind of like, deciding on a dose for each of those three? It depends what we're treating. If it's an anxiety, fear, stress situation, um, I always like to start between nine to 12 milligrams um, of uh, full spectrum, or of CBD, which, has full spe which is full spectrum. And then, of course, you wanna shake it up, lift the lip, get it right onto the gums. Of course, if it goes down their throat, it, it doesn't hurt them. We're just the, the objective is to get it into their bloodstream, which is where it works best. Mm -hmm. um, it does work, of course, if they swallow it and it goes into their stomach. But like I said, they've got to, you know, go through our whole digestive system and most of the medicine will just come right out. So that's why you want to make sure you get it on their gums. So you would give them the nine to 12 and then you would wait 20 minutes. Um, and then if they are not calm, then you give them another dose. You don't ever have to worry about overdosing them. I like to tell the story that my nine pound, 12 year old schnauzer needs two full droppers to calm down um, for a thunderstorm. And Nina, my Doberman Pinscher needs a quarter of a dropper. Mm. So, you know, three milligrams and she's calm um, and she's seven. So you never know. You can't, you can't say this is how much it will work. If it's for pain, um, arthritis, pain, inflammation, uh, those types of things, I'd say also it depends. You, you can start with a uh, nine to 12 milligrams again. And then I always like to say 24 to 48 hours. If you're not seeing them getting up, moving, being more puppy like running, like you will see it. You'll be like, Oh my gosh. And then you'll feel really bad. Like were they in pain that whole time? And now they're running around. But you'll, you'll have a golden retriever or a German shepherd that has hip dysplasia or hip issues that takes them a really long time to get up, get up and start running, swimming. I've seen it over and over again. Um, if it's something more serious like an autoimmune disease or cancer or seizures, uh, I recommend 30, what's worked in my experience is 37 milligrams to 45 milligrams. Um, but the story, the research, the clinical research has just came out, uh, I think at CSU, used 50 milligrams a day to get rid of the cancer. So I've changed that to 35 milligrams to 50 milligrams a day uh, if you're treating a serious disease. And when you're saying these milligrams, you're referring to, so I'm looking at your product here in this, the full spectrum, in the Calm product. There's nine milligrams of CBD in a one drop serving. I have that correct? Yep. So if for someone to get the 45 milligrams, it would be five droppers. That's correct? Yes. As opposed, or, so it's, it's not the total amount of milligrams, including the hemp oil. It's the CBD correct. that you're going for. 
exactly. Okay. So, and if you're, and if you have a dog that's serious, has more serious conditions, you wouldn't go for, that's a two ounce bottle, it's 550 milligrams and nine milligrams per serving. You'd wanna go for something that's an 1100 to 1500 milligram in a one ounce bottle where the milligrams are higher per dropper. Otherwise you're using a lot more medicine um, to get the same result and right. going through. So, you know, for instance, our Calm is nine milligrams and it's a two ounce bottle at $75 versus the Heal, which is 1100 milligrams, 37 milligrams per serving, Per dropper and $99 but it's a better deal to get that one because then you're not using as much as the medicine right so the really really you want to be pricing it on a per milligram of CBD quantity exactly per serving right got it per okay. milligram per milliliter <laughs> right so I have this this product up now on the um, on the on the site so this is um, so in the previous one, it was 28 milligram in a thir in 37 milligram dropper. It was um, 28 milligrams of hemp oil, nine milligrams of CBD. This one is, um, let's see, 37 milligrams of CBD and 93 milligrams of hemp seed oil. 93. Okay, so it's a higher, much higher, higher. It's a higher quantity of CBD, but the concentration seems about. The same. Higher, it's much higher, higher in the hemp seed oil and in the full spectrum than in the other two, other two tinctures. Okay. Yeah, interesting, interesting stuff on. So very helpful. So you talked about um, you know the common common things that people are using CBD for. There's stress and anxiety. There's joint. Um, of course, you've mentioned mentioned people are using it to you know treat the the symptoms of or even like really try to directly this is what happens is of course i get text emailed facebook message on a regular basis does it help this and literally what i do is i type in whatever it is into google and see if it was caused by inflammation of something and then i can say yes and that's why everybody are like well, how can it work on all these things because it gets rid of inflammation so does it help diabetes uh-huh does it help obesity just learn that it helps with obesity uh-huh does it help with acne? Uh-huh. You know, anything that you can think of, because all of those things are caused by inflammation. Rheumatoid arthritis is the inflammation of my joints. So if I get rid of that inflammation, my pain goes away. And I can start healing. I can start taking something else natural that will help with the healing. Yeah. Um, and so what, what, what about the health benefits of, like, you know, myself, I, all this CBD stuff is the rage, and, and I'm very active physically with you know, pretty high intensity workouts, et cetera. And um, I've gotten some CBD products before and they are the higher quality, full spectrum stuff um, from people that I know in the industry. And I don't really feel like I notice anything. So to what extent does a dog that doesn't have any issues, so to speak, might they actually benefit from something from, you know, an ongoing, you know, daily maintenance dose of CBD, for example. What's, what's your thought on that? Well, it, it should be considered as a nutritional supplement because the first time you get CBD or any animal gets CBD is through their mother's breast milk. Hmm. So even if you weren't breastfed, you already have an, a deficiency in your endocannabinoid system. So giving it to a puppy as a nutritional supplement is just going to help keep inflammation out of their body and help them. And if there is a deficiency, fill that deficiency. Now, I have a rule that any senior dog, which is eight years old and older, and any senior person should be on a CBD regimen because it will keep the inflammation out and it's gonna get rid of that, that pain that you feel in arthritis and in your back and in all those things. Um, my business partner is a Broadway performer and him and several take CBD for muscle repair because it helps speed up the recovery if you injure yourself. Um, that's another reason we have salves, of salves that have arnica oil in it and other, other natural um, essential oils that help with muscle repair and um, injury. Um, so there's all kinds that do this. So you may not have felt much different, but you also don't know if you maybe pulled something or did something wrong and you didn't feel it because 
since you were on CBD. Yeah. Um, on another story I learned in when I was in college, when the University of Vermont's program was there was a this girl who was a major pothead in high school and in college. And she was like, I got to stop this. You know, I'm in my 30s now. I need to stop smoking so much pot. So she stops cold turkey. And she, of course, feels like shit. And then she's not feeling better. So she goes to the doctor and they diagnose her with multiple sclerosis. And that she's had it her entire life. Wow. And she said, well, how come I didn't feel anything? And they figured out that it was because she was smoking so much pot. So of course she went back to smoking pot, but you know, things like that where she didn't even know what she was doing um, was actually helping a disease that she had because she didn't have the symptoms. So, you know, things like you hear stories like that and you're like, Oh my God, that's, that's crazy. So even though you not necessarily felt anything different, if you were having a deficiency, you know, if you were like me and had rheumatoid arthritis, then you're going to feel a difference. If you're under a lot of stress and anxiety, you're going to feel a difference. Um, you know, you can, it, you know, some people who, who maybe don't have really issues or are taking it. I always tell them, it's kind of like you just go, you get to the end of your day and you go, I didn't want to kill anyone today. You know, I never got to the point where I thought, you know, I got so aggravated with whatever life, my cell phone, not working, you know, my computer, not whatever it is. So it's almost like you have to kind of journal it and pay attention to it is working. It's just working so nicely because you don't feel high. You don't feel different. You just had a really good freaking day, you know, <laughs> and that's how it works for dogs too. You know, you're going to see them relax. You're going to see them be, become more social. You're going to see them get over their anxieties, um, be able to participate, uh, become more comfortable. So it's, they're the same way, just it works even better on them. Um, so what are some of the red flags to look out for? If, if someone was at a, a pet store and they're looking at six different CBD products on the shelf, you know, at, at, like, at this point for me, I, I go to, you know, I, I look, pull a supplement bag off the shelf and I can tell within, you know, five seconds, the quality of ingredients, the testing, just so many little red flags there. So what are those for uh, a, a hemp oil or CBD product that an owner might, should be on the lookout for when they're searching? Well, the good thing is, is if you're going to a, um, a pet shop, you're, you're probably pretty, you're, you're already on the right track because um, that's where you're going to find these products because PetSmart, Petco, all the big, big box stores are scared to touch it because of the FDA and because of um, the legalities of it. So you're not necessarily going to find it in the big box stores. You may, but it may be a broad spectrum product. Or now you'll find salves. And the reason you're going to find salves is because the FDA doesn't care about salves. So everybody is taking on salves. So like because it's external or what? Because it's not ingested. It's not considered a supplement. So like right now, Walmart wants our salves. CVS wants our salves because that's their way of kind of getting into the market slowly, um, and the FDA not bothering them. Um, so going to a boutique shop is a is a great way, but you want to start your search online so that you can find the company that you trust and has all the things that you want. And if it doesn't, you can call them and talk to them. You can go to their social pages. You can go to their reviews. Um, you can find their COA. So I would start there. And then most of those companies have where you can find it in the store near you. There's a retailer list and, or you can buy it right there from them online. Mm -hmm. um, and so you guys are, you guys do, do both. So people can get your products online. And then I'm also looking here, I'll, I'll, I'll screen share again uh, so they can see that there are retail locations. You're all over the, all over the place here. So Florida, um, a, lot, a lot in the Southeast, if I have that right. That's right. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, and the, uh, the other thing is to stay away from Amazon. <laughs> Don't buy it on Amazon. Um, people who are selling it on Amazon um, have to, A, the odds of you getting a good product are very low. It's very hard. Um, if a good 
good company wants to put her on Amazon, we're not allowed to say hemp or CBD or full spectrum or anything. So we can't tell you what we are or what it is. So nobody else can. Um, hmm. That's where a lot of crazy marketing terms came up, like PCR rich, which means phytocannabinoid rich, active CBD, um, you know, organic, uh, what else? This, I don't know. It always changes because literally the companies will send their stock to Amazon and Amazon will start selling it like crazy and then go, Oh, nope, you can't say that anymore. So we're, we're getting rid of this. And then they give them, they change their labels and send it off again. And it works for a little while. And then Amazon goes, Nope, can't do that. So, um, it's, it's nearly impossible to find a good product on Amazon, mm. which is fine. They don't need to have everything. <laughs> So you're all about, you know, your, your mission just being to educate consumers as much as possible about the benefits of, of CBD, what to look out for, what boxes to check when you're looking for products. So, um, and I know you're in the, in the process of putting together some, you already have some great resources, of course, on your site, but you're in the, in the process of putting together some additional ones. What are those that people should be on the lookout for? Um, I'll share with you that, you know, the top kind of five, six, narrowed it down to six tips on trying to choose a product. Um, okay. So it's a cheat sheet of sorts. It's a cheat sheet. So I'll send it to you or link it to you for, um, for your listeners. Perfect. And then also on there is a link that links to all of the research that's out there so far on pets and cannabis, proving that full spectrum is the way you want to go. Um, the extraction uh, from the flowers, getting a pure product the other carrier oils that work, um, all of that is on there. So if someone is hesitant and doesn't believe in full spectrum or THC, we now have clinical research and proof that it works, which we didn't even have a year ago. Hmm. Um, so this, that's a wonderful thing. That's a wonderful thing about states like Colorado, you know, and hmm. California, and actually the best where we find the most research is Israel. Yep. Which you can find just about, Every human disease has been treated successfully um, over in Israel, who is the leader in the world in cannabis research. Incredible. So um, before we close things out here, can you tell us about Fireflake Farm, your farm? Yes. yes. Um, so the first thing I did to treat my anxiety <laughs> was uh, I, I don't know how to just relax and do nothing so I re realized that I had to find something that I could do that was relaxing and of course working with animals and rescuing animals and gardening is where, where was that um, so I started it about 12 years ago my inspiration was Jean Bauer of Farm Sanctuary who mm. um, has been rescuing farm animals forever and um, I'm a vegetarian so my dogs aren't but I am <laughs> And I just started being a resource in Florida for rescuing farm animals. Um, so I end up with a lot of roosters. I'm at a rooster max right now. But, <laughs> you know, the people that get the, uh, you know, the chicken phase, remember everybody got chickens in their backyard and then the chickens stopped laying eggs and they didn't want them anymore. So uh, I have a lot of farm animals. And then, of course, I rescue dogs. And I also have a grooming and boarding and retail shop. So they kind of go hand in hand. It's kind of like, you know, if someone can't take care of their animal. Sometimes we'll foster them, which is where a lot of times like that lab, I had her for four months and was able to get rid of her tumors and hand her back to her, to her mom. Um, so we're always fostering training and rescuing. So just this, these past two weeks, we've had three dogs um, given to us, turned over, dumped, and we place two of them and then we have a, an old pit bull that we're trying to figure out what the heck to do with. Wow. So how many dogs in total? So I always have, like right now there's 10 dogs at my house. There's a standard poodle, one of my rescues. Come here, Lucy. <laughs> uh, another, oh yeah, I've got, so this is, so we've got five in here and then another five outside playing. Lucy, okay. come say hi. Lucy. Come up here. Come here. <laughs> so funny her parents always accuse me she's, she's shy. She's, okay remy wants to come up remy the rescue hey remy <laughs> i'm a mess but i'm a rescue. What's up, buddy 
<laughs> so it's really amazing how many, um, you know, people with well, good intentions who want a pet but are, are unable to take care of them. And what breaks my heart is that a lot of times, um, you know, they take, they've gone to the vet and they've had to pay so much money and they have to keep up on prescriptions and those types of things are making the dog sicker. So it's this wheel that they have to keep going when in the first place they could have given them an all natural product and it would have gotten rid of whatever it was and we didn't have to jump on that wheel in the first place. And this is a perfect example of it. She's filled with problems. She couldn't afford the vet bills, and I got her. She doesn't have to go to a vet anymore. She eats raw. She takes CBD. She takes Supreme probiotics. Remy. <laughs> funny. She's very happy. Very cute. And she got yeah, her fancy looks, haircut, even though she looks pretty chill. <laughs> she is chill. Um, but yeah, I love. Um, uh, like I said, my two favorite things in the world are cannabis and and dogs and I'm living the dream and I just want to educate as many people to try this medicine for themselves and for their pets because it's life-changing and get off those toxic prescription drugs for them that, that they may be on and that their animals may be on. Yeah or at a very minimum do research and become as educated as you can and make your own decision you know at least it's informed and it's not informed by just because someone, you know, doctor or whoever said, said to do it. So a couple of, I'll give you a couple of my favorite resources. Um, great. For humans, it's projectcbd.org. Okay. Um, and they, you literally can type in just about any disease and they'll take you to research showing you, um, you know, how it's worked. Uh, dogsnaturally.com is a nice yep. a holistic resource. Um, I have a ton of stuff on mine. Uh, the Society of Cannabis Clinicians is also a wonderful resource um but everything that you read on the human side is it goes for the same for pets just they don't need as much as the thc as we do got it all right angela this has been great anything else you'd like to share with our listeners i can't think of anything else but thanks for having me i think we covered a lot if you think of anything else reach out i'd be happy to answer yeah no this was great i mean i learned a ton and and great to know your brand is out there so Angela Ardolino with cbddoghealth.com and I'll put all the great stuff here um, from the episode in the show notes including links etc so thanks again Angela you bet thank you okay